Good day, folks, and welcome to review number 52. Today we're going to continue our look at the string of masterpiece transformers that we have been blessed with lately, and take a closer look at the MP12 Lambor, aka Sideswipe. So, starting off looking at the packaging, uh, Lambor, or Sideswipe, comes packaged in very similar packaging to the other uh, Takara Masterpiece figures with the uh, black matte finish, the white border, and then uh, images of Sideswipe in robot and vehicle mode here on the front. Um, and of course, the the images, it's, it's, it's kind of... Yeah, you can kind of see it here. The uh, you can see the the background is a matte finish, and the image itself has a gloss finish to it. Um, what's also interesting on this figure is they do have the Lamborghini logo here too, and uh, as we'll see here in a little bit, uh, they actually uh, got an official license for this product. The back of the packaging features several images of Sideswipe in his vehicle and robot modes, as well as a few comparison images of Sideswipe to uh, MP10 Masterpiece Optimus. Um, there's also a lot of text here on the back, but uh, unfortunately I do not read Japanese, so I couldn't tell you what any of it says. Now, as I mentioned, uh, this is an officially licensed product from Lamborghini, and that can be illustrated by this little uh, hologram image we've got here on the bottom, uh, giving us the, the official license from Lamborghini for this product. So, after opening the packaging, you pull out the side swipe in vehicle mode, and uh, the vehicle it is a uh, a pretty accurate uh, representation of the uh, Lamborghini Countach. Uh, you've got you know a lot of detail here, um, and they uh, they did a, a real good job uh, replicating the the actual vehicle, uh, and of course by replicating the actual vehicle they do a good job of. Uh, replicating the original G1 sideswipe figure as well. So um, the the mold of the of the vehicle is uh, is fantastic. Now, unfortunately, there are uh, a couple issues I've got with the vehicle mode here, and it's not actually with the vehicle mode itself. It's more quality control. And uh, from what I'm hearing from the forums, uh, it seems to be a fairly widespread spread problem. Uh, the paint application on my figure is not that great. Um, you can see you've got some orange peeling going on there. Um, I've got some issues with some overspray on a door panel over here. Uh, there's some issues with underspray on a few other parts. Um, so it's just not a real even or quality paint application um, and with this being a masterpiece figure it is disappointing uh, you would expect a little bit more quality control with a uh, with a figure at this price point but uh, does it detract from the mold a whole lot not really and it, it's one of those things that um, it's it's something you know when you know it's a you know sixty to eighty dollar figure that's you know that's when it bugs you a little bit more, um, but it, you know it's something you can live with. But it would something it's something that I prefer they would have done a little bit better job. Um, one other minor issue I've got, and it's not not a big deal. Uh, they went with plastic wheels on here and, you know, where many of the other masterpieces have had uh, rubber tires. Um, you know, when you start seeing a little cost savings, things like that, you kind of feel like they're getting away from the idea of a masterpiece figure uh, in order to just sell you a product. And uh, if, uh, if they're going to make a collector product, I just wish they would go 
all out and make it a collector product and not start pinching pennies on the Masterpiece line like they have with the mainline figures. As we've been told several times now, uh, beginning from MP10 and moving forward, the Masterpiece line will have a relative scale to it, uh, mainly relating to the uh, G1 uh, size charts that were kind of put together, even though it's kind of hard to, uh, <laughs> even from the uh, G1 show, scale was so off it was uh, kind of hard to judge. But uh, they've put together an official scale. And uh, so uh, comparing it to the MP10 vehicle, uh, you can you can see that it's it's relatively in scale. Um, this is about what you'd expect for a Countach to look like in relation to a semi cab. Um, and I I don't have the uh, the trailer handy here, but uh, sideswipe in vehicle mode does uh, fit well into the uh, MP10 trailer. All right. Time to take a look at Sideswipe's transformation process. I had heard some complaints online when images of MP12 first started showing up that Sideswipe was just going to be an expensive deluxe toy. This premise breaks down though when you get into the transformation as this is where MP12 shines as a masterpiece level toy. There are many more moving parts and panels on this figure than you would find on most mainline toys. And, for the most part, everything clips together to form a very solid robot. While complex, the transformation is not too difficult, and I really don't find any trouble going back and forth between robot and vehicle modes. There's really only one complaint I have against the transformation, though, and that is the leg panels. While they technically clip into place and are solid once there, they are a bit finicky about how they actually get there. I find this is the area where I spend the most time fiddling with parts, trying to get those leg panels to catch. In addition, once you get the panels in place, they still leave a bit of a gap on the bottom, on the inside of the leg, leaving some of the hollowness of the legs exposed. Still, I'm very satisfied with how Sideswipe transforms, and even though he's smaller and a little simpler than other figures in this line, he's still worthy of the Masterpiece name. So, here we have Masterpiece Sideswipe in his robot mode. And uh, first impressions of him is this is Sideswipe. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Um, he just pulls off the G1 Sideswipe look perfectly. And uh, this is, you know, this is what you would expect a masterpiece Sideswipe to be. To be honest, uh, you really couldn't expect much more. Um, but down to the figure itself, uh, you've got a uh, articulated head here. Uh, you've got uh, multi-jointed shoulder, bicep swivel, elbow joint, wrist swivel, uh, articulated hands. You do have a waist swivel here. Uh, you've got multi-jointed hips, knees. Uh, you've got uh, multi-jointed ankles here, so he's just a very well-articulated sideswipe figure, and he's what you would expect from a masterpiece. Now, I do have a couple little nitpicks uh, here, and I must emphasize that these are nitpicks. Um, I still think this is an absolutely fantastic figure, and uh, if you don't have him, you should get him. Um, but just uh, one thing, I wish um, this panel would have uh, covered up the legs just a little bit better, because it's, it's still fairly obvious that these are hollow legs here. Um, but uh, 
And the way these clip together, um, it's a little bit fidgety. And uh, at least on my figure, they can pop out a little bit when you're posing the figure. It's, again, not a big deal. You just pop them right back into place and, and you're fine. Um, so it's not a big deal, but it is something to be aware of. One other issue in robot mode to be aware of, um, and it's not really a, a problem, uh, but it's just something that I discovered on my own. Um, there's this little tab in here that the uh, front bumper tabs into, and uh, it, on mine anyway, it is very, very tight, but it goes in a little bit um, before it really clicks into place. And uh, when I was transforming him the uh, first few times, um, I actually kind of equated that to uh, the backpack tab on uh, Masterpiece Rodimus that um, it doesn't, you know, on Rodimus, it doesn't really fit in snugly. So it, there's a little bit of a friction joint there, but it doesn't hold a whole lot. And I actually thought that's what this was at first until uh, I actually pushed a little bit harder on it and I got it to that click point. And uh, now it's it's rock solid, but uh, it's it's a little takes a little bit more force than you might expect uh, to get it in. So uh, make sure you do clip that in all the way. It makes the uh, robot much more solid. Sideswipe doesn't come with a whole lot of accessories, um, but he does come with the important ones. He of course has his uh, shoulder mounted. Uh, missile launcher, uh, which doesn't actually launch a, a missile like the old toy does, but it's show accurate. Um, and he comes with his gun that he had in the show. Um, he also comes with these um, two pile drivers. You can fold his hand back and place these in there. Um, he used these, I believe it was during the, uh, the episode with the Dinobots where uh, they were breaking the fossils loose in the cave. Um, yeah, th these don't mean a whole lot to me and will probably sit in the packaging. Um, the only accessory I wish he would have came with um, was uh, his rocket pack that he used in uh, uh, More Than Meets the Eye. Uh, for his uh, Jet Judo and the one that uh, Optimus borrowed uh, to try to uh, reach the nemesis as it was taking off. And uh, really, I think that it would have been fairly easy to do that. They have a, uh, a little port back here um, where you can mount the weapons in vehicle mode, and uh, or the cannon anyway, uh, in vehicle mode, and they could have easily made a, uh, a jet pack that would have just tabbed into that on his back. Um, and, you know, maybe it's something a, a third-party company could, could come up with. But uh, overall, though, he, he comes with what he needs with uh, to look like Sideswipe. Again, going back to the issue of scale, the Masterpiece line is supposed to be in scale to itself uh, after MP10. So here we have the uh, MP10 Masterpiece Optimus, and uh, <clears throat> it's it's kind of difficult to tell, uh, especially you know based on the the G1 cartoon where size varied so much, but this does seem fairly accurate to how tall uh, side, side, uh, side Swipe would have been compared to Optimus uh, in that series. So um, you can see how they're trying to keep the scale uh, fairly accurate. Another complaint that's kind of been uh, bandied about on the internet is uh, that Sideswipe isn't much more than a uh, very expensive deluxe. Um, so here he is next to a modern deluxe figure with the uh, Prime uh, Deluxe Megatron. And uh, you can still see he stands uh, about a shoulder and head taller than Megatron yet. Um, 
and really I think uh, when you look at a 60 to 80 dollar price point for the masterpiece figure I still think that value is there when you look at the the amount of engineering that goes into the transformation for this figure the uh, accuracy of the figure and uh, you know just and well then throw in the licensing the fact that they had to uh, pay Lamborghini to actually license the vehicle mode um, I think th what you pay for the figure is uh, it is to be expected and I do think it's worth it the MP12 Lambor slash Sideswipe figure is the first figure released under the new direction that the Masterpiece line is going. No longer will they only focus on the larger characters, but we are going to see smaller, more secondary characters show up as well, and even in scale. The Masterpiece line now has the potential to be what I wished the Alternators line could have been. I'm really hoping Takara Tomy can get the Porsche license next. If I can get a Masterpiece Jazz of equal or better quality as this Sideswipe, then this collector might actually weep tears of joy.